think I've given you each a copy of the, uh, again, we usually use this quarterly update as a year in review, so that's what I've uh, done again this, year, uh, this time around. So our current personnel, full-time <coughs> staffing level is 34 sworn. In March, Officer William Cronin retired after 30 years of service to the department. We congratulate Bill on his retirement, and I'm happy to report he will remain with the department as a part-time officer. In April, Officer Robert Turcott retired as a result of injuries sustained in the line of duty. Bob began his career with the Department in 2004, and his camaraderie will be greatly missed. As you recall, a number of times uh, Bob was uh, making, in the process of making arrests when he was dragged by a car for a, a substantial distance and su sustained career-ending injuries. In May, Officer Jay Papalato and Officer Brandon Whitehead graduated from the 173rd New Hampshire Police Academy. <coughs> Officer Papalotto resides in Salem, New Hampshire. Officer Whitehead resides in Hampton and is a graduate of Winnicott High School. Both officers began their careers as part-time officers with the department in 2015. In May, Officer Robert Kenyon was assigned to the Criminal Investigation Division. Detective Kenyon has served the department since 2007. Officers Jackson, Sorokins, and Robinson were assigned to summer corporals, successfully filling those positions from June until September. In July, part-time officer Justin LaDuke was appointed as a full-time officer and will attend and currently is attending the 175th New Hampshire Police Academy, commencing, just started uh, two weeks ago. Officer Shannon Feely was assigned as assistant prosecutor in October. Our current part-time staffing level is very fluid, but right now as we sit here today, it's 29. Nine new part-time officers joined the department, uh, department ranks in time for the summer season. Department had 14 part-time officers leave their positions in 2017. Ten of those officers were hired as full-time officers, including three with the Hampton Police Department. We currently have 10 new, re uh, new officer recruits in training scheduled to, to come to work for the 2018 summer season. The department will be testing for the part-time officer applicants on Saturday, April 7th. That will be at Hampton PD. Anyone interested in testing can register online at HamptonPD.com. Uh, highlighting some civilian personnel, we've had a lot of movement there this year also, uh, in 17. In January, communication specialist Dan Necessity retired from the department after more than 11 years of service. Dan is a longtime resident of the town of Hampton and a distinguished veteran of the United States Army. We wish Dan the very best in his future endeavors. In April, Alessandra Lease assumed the duties of communication specialist. In August, Peter McKinnon retired from the department after more than 28 years of service as animal control officer. Peter's service and dedication to the town went well above his job description. Peter's incredible sense of humor will be greatly missed. In August, Anthony Palmazano assumed the duties of animal control officer. On September 18th, uh, the Hampton Police Department suffered a tragic loss with the sudden passing of Marsha Hess. Marsha was one of those figures that are the lifeblood of an organization. Beginning her career with the department in 1987, Marsha spent almost 30 years listening and guiding officers, prosecutors, attorneys, citizens, and the occasional chief of police through the travails of the justice system. In 2018, a plaque will be unveiled at the entry of the prosecutor's office, memorializing her contribution to the mission of the department and dedicating the pro pro uh, excuse me, prosecutor's office in her memory. In, no in November, Shannon Titcomb assumed the duties as prosecution secretary Shannon came to the department after serving 15 years in the district court and circuit court systems in New Hampshire. Department operations. Recruitment and retention continue to be areas of focus and concern for the department and for law enforcement across the country. Each year it takes, an extraordinary, it takes extraordinary efforts by our training cadre to prepare our special part-time officers for the summer beach operation. Our supervisory personnel did an outstanding job leading and mentoring a team that provided for a safe and enjoyable summer season. In addition to our in-house training programs, the Hampton Police Department hosts some of the finest law enforcement training in the country in our training room. Many of these training sessions are attended by officers from around the United States and Canada. The prestigious list of training includes, but is not limited to, the FBI Leadership Series, which is five courses, the New Hampshire Police Standards and Training Part-Time Officer Academy, we conduct two sessions, and the New Hampshire State Police Civil Disorder Training. Social Security Administration Law Enforcement Training, and the New England Crisis Negotiators Association, and GSPCC Social Media Classes for Law Enforcement. Tragically, seven overdose deaths were investigated in Hampton in 2017. Patrol Division and the Criminal Investigation Division continue to work diligently with our local, state, and federal partners to combat the opiate epidemic 
the region has experienced. The department continues to have an officer assigned to a regional federal task force to help combat this issue. The department has continued with regional efforts working with the Portsmouth Police Department, the Greenwood Police Department, and the Seabrook Police Department to form a Seacoast Region High Intensity Drug Intervention Team, utilizing grant funds from the New Hampshire Department of Safety, Safety Law Enforcement Opiate Abuse Reduction Initiative. With a continuing shortage of officers in the department, continue. Uh, Pardon me, for the continuing short of officers, the department continued with the program of bringing in experienced officers from other agencies to augment our staffing levels on weekends and during special events. This has proven to be very helpful in maintaining order and providing for good traffic flow through the beach area. Special thanks to the New Hampshire State Police, Rockingham County Sheriff's Department, University of New Hampshire Police Department, Epping Police Department, Exeter Police Department, Green, uh, Greenland Police Department, and the Seacoast Emergency Response Team who all provided personnel and equipment to assist during our busy summer season. I'd also like to thank the Seabrook Police Department for the continued cooperation and coordination of traffic control along the Ocean Boulevard corridor. The department also worked closely with the New Hampshire Liquor Enforcement Bureau, conducting compliance checks and coordinating efforts to reduce the level of over-service and enforcement of underage drinking laws. Additional thanks to the New Hampshire Department of Transportation, New Hampshire Homeland Security Emergency Management, and the New Hampshire National Guard 12th Civil Support Team. Special note of thanks to each of these agencies for the continued support and cooperation, making Hampton a great place to live and visit. Underneath, we have our activity for uh, 2017 as a comparison to the same period of 2016. I'll go through these pretty quickly. Calls for service are down 4%. Motor vehicle stops are down 6%. Arrests were up 21%. DWIs up. 29%. Drug offenses down 3%. Total incidents reported down 12%. Offenses up 4%. Felonies down 28%. Parking tickets down 34%. And accidents down 12%. And with that, I will take any questions from the board. Thank you. Regina? Thank you, Chief. And sorry for the department and the town's loss of Masha Hess. I know she has a lot to you guys. Um, I do have a question on the report. So you say 10 of those officers were hired as full-time officers, so only three of them, though, stayed in Hampton? Correct. The three, uh, we historically try to hire from our part-time ranks, um, so we did have the three vacancies that occurred in 17, and so three. It's great to hire from within, but when you do that, it's, it's also negative against your part-time ranks. So three of the 10 came to Hampton. I believe two went to Manchester, two went to UNH, one to Salem, Two to the Massachusetts State Police, um, and off the top of my head, I can't recall the others. So unfortunately, we had seven leave the town. That is uh, right. I know it's yeah. It's what we're it's experiencing. Tip typical, we, I guess, right now. We do a great job training people. Uh, if we get a summer or two out of them, some of the people of the fourteen that left were also part of the nine that we hired. We have actually, we actually had three of them that came to work for us, and before they were uh, finished the year had been hired by other agencies. So we do a great job uh, recruiting, uh, <coughs> developing, but other agencies are well aware of that. When you walk into a, an interview and you say you work for Hampton PD, it usually puts you at the top of the pile. Right. So. But I wanted to say, I had a call on um, HPD today because I got home. I was driving back to my house this afternoon and there was a stranded dog on the road. And I called the police station and you know they got Tony and he was literally there Officer Palmazano was there in like 10, 15 minutes, made sure the dog was safe. And, uh, you know, I guess you guys have a way to figure out how the tag. If they have a tag, we can identify right. whether it be a vet tag or a town tag. We can identify. And he ended that. up being a neighborhood dog, but, you know, I wasn't sure and I was nervous that he was going to get hit by a car. So I was very glad to see that the animal control officer was there very promptly to make sure the dog would it's be. It's a very busy area of the police department, and Peter yes. was always very busy, and Tony hasn't, uh, hasn't had any relief from that, that uh, tempo either. Well, I've actually so. never had to call the animal control officer before, so that was my first experience, so it was a good one. Thank you. I noticed the uh, <clears throat> school is looking for a second resource officer. Yes. <clears throat> How's that going to affect your department? We had discussions... Um, in a non-public session to talk about school safety as a whole. Mm -hmm. We talked about a number of issues, but one of the things that they, they've really determined is the physical presence of an officer is what they desire, and I, and I can't argue the logic of it, what they're trying to accomplish. Um, at one point, they were actually talking about two. 
uh, going back and forth, but it's as good as we are, and I like to brag about how good we are, we're also very expensive. You're talking $100,000 to outfit an officer when you start talking about wages, benefits, equipment, the training they have to go through. You're talking $100,000. I explained to them we're just not in a position uh, to fund any portion of that within the department, that if they wanted this, they would have to fund it for the, the full 12-month period, and <coughs> they thought that was uh, worth, a worthwhile endeavor, and I, I applaud them for taking a positive So it will be a new position for you guys. It will be an additional position. <coughs> Correct. We will. That's what I was just making sure that we're not strapping you already with the, the you short staffed you are by taking another one and put it in the school. If we're going to put a new position on, that's perfect. Yeah, what we'll do is we'll find a veteran officer, usually like somebody with three or more years on, that will go into the schools as an SRO, and then we'll backfill that position with a new yeah. person. New that's person. fine. I just, I think it's great. I just want to make sure you're not robbing Peter to pay Paul. That was a right now we're at that point where we couldn't do that unless we were adding personnel. We're kind of stretched a little thin right now. So, thank you. Mr. Griffin. Now, it sounds, I was looking at um, your report. It seems like um, many things are down, but um, the arrests are up. Yes. I think that's just the activity we're seeing. Um, a lot of that, as you can see, the DWIs are up. Um, a lot of that deals with alcohol, and, and I think I've been pretty clear since I took over as chief. And one of the number one things I wanted to work on is the over-service of alcohol coming out of our establishments. I'm all for people having a good time. Uh, it's just when it gets to the point where they're falling into the roadways or getting behind the wheel that we, we have to take proactive measures. So I think a lot of those uh, increases that you see are a direct result of that type of uh, work we're doing. Yeah, I think that's very true. I, you know, it, is the town, would the town be responsible if uh, these people are hit but just because they, they didn't know they were going to be served so much and all of a sudden they get hit by a car crossing the street? Well, we can see, you know, we've seen recently where you can add the name of the town to any lawsuit you'd like is whether it, it prevails is the question. Um, no, I, I, unless they, we were shown to be completely negligent in, in our application of trying to enforce those things, I don't think anybody could ever make that argument. If you look at our budget and the number of resources we bring in primarily for that summer season, I think it would be hard to make that argument that we're being negligent. So, no, I wouldn't think it would come back on the town. I'm not aware of any community ever being successfully sued in that type of scenario. It usually comes back to the licensee. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Deputy Hobbs. Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chief, uh, Deputy, thank you for the uh, brief. Uh, Chief, would you care to uh, offer comment on the legislation that I saw you uh, um, participating in a discussion in Concord about, uh, well, you, you can explain it. I think you know what I'm talking about. There, there is a uh, current Senate bill, and I'm sorry off the top, I can't remember what number it was, but uh, it deals with retirees that come back to work um, in the employment of a, a member of the retirement system. So in the town of Hampton, we have nine retirees working as part-time officers. These are folks that either work for us or other police departments that we now utilize in a part-time capacity. These positions that they hold have always been part-time, uh, and so it's not really what they were trying to stop. There is a move afoot that is very concerned about communities that take a full-time position and make it a part-time position, um, and that's really what's caused the stir lately about the retirement system. Um, they talk about it. It's Right now, it's really in, uh, the director of the retirement system two years ago talked about this issue. It's, re it's a negligible issue. Uh, it is an impact, but it doesn't have any significant financial impact on the system. But it's the, I think it's more the appearance of it that bothers some people. So we were at risk of potentially, if some of the changes that they had proposed were made, losing nine people uh, overnight, nine experienced people out of the 29 we have. That would have been uh, devastating to this agency. I don't, I'm not quite sure how would we recover from that, uh, considering we, you know we get assets from the state police, but they're in the same position we are. They're struggling to, to fill their roles, and we're not seeing the presence that we used to see. Um, there was a compromise uh, that came forward that it used to be that you weren't supposed to work more than 32 hours 
if you did, then there was a cap for a five-month period, and then you were done working for a year. That seemed to have worked for everybody, but again, the, the appearance of people. So what they've come up with now is there's going to be a cap of 1,300 hours. Now, that's a soft cap. If an employee, a part-time employee, a retiree, was to exceed the 1,300 hours, he has a max cap of 1,600 hours. In any of those hours between 1,300 and 1,600, he would have to pay a stipend of 3% to the retirement system. The community that was employing this individual would also have to pay a 5% stipend. It's one of those things, uh, it's quite frankly, I don't know why they were messing with it, but they were, but it's a compromise that, that I think is manageable. A 3% stipend for 300 hours a year and a 5% for the employer is not catastrophic. Uh, it's better than paying the 29 point whatever we're paying for a full-time retiree right now and the employee, employee paying 11.4. So it's still a bit of a savings on both sides, and I'm not quite sure why they're making any change at all uh, if the director of the system is telling us it's negligible, but that's the direction we went in. There was a number of us up there testifying before the Senate committee on that. I believe right now it's in finance. It was the last stop. I don't know where it is at particularly at this point. If that takes place, I'm not quite sure. Originally they were talking about a January 1 of 19 initiation on that, but then that changed upon signature, so I'm not sure what the timetable or if it will survive the process. I haven't really uh, followed up on that lately. So, Thank you. Appreciate it, Chief. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Um, <coughs> DWI up 29%. Is that, as you said, because of better surveillance or is that because of more drinking? Um, I, I think you can attribute a little bit to both. If you look at, you know, what we're experiencing down in Hampton, you know, that renaissance, when we talked about the entertainment uh, ordinance, I, I highlighted that you know, in the last 10 years, $260 million of growth have gone into that little stretch of sand down there. That's quite a bit, and I'm sure that's, that's a low number. Um, I think the accommodations have improved. I think the entertainment venues have improved. And I think that's making Hampton a bigger draw. And with that, we are really focusing, again, when I first took over as chief, I, you, you could see it coming with the, with the growth that we have to address those issues, or if it's left unfettered, <coughs> we're going to have a lot of tragedies, and we're really trying to avoid that. So I think it's a little bit of both. Super. Parking tickets down 34%. I can, that's, well, here's the problem. You, re, you, you rob Peter to pay Paul. We had a, uh, a great guy, uh, Jim Mills, was our parking enforcement guy. And remember last year I came and asked to create a part-time evidence technician's position? Mm -hmm. uh, he is a former, he's a retired postmaster. Those are the most organized people in the world, and I couldn't think of anybody better suited to organize the evidence room and handle that. So we lost him in the parking area, uh, but our evidence room is uh, looking as good as it's ever looked. Uh, we're going to try to backfill with a couple more bodies this summer to try to make up for some of the, uh, the loss of Jim's efforts. But it was one man okay. that made the difference. Wow, huge. Uh, and the other thing is, I was watching the news tonight before I came, and they were talking about the federal budget, I think, and they were talking about a cut in the drug enforcement that would bother the coordination. We went through that um, last year. There was an issue of the budget where we were kind of hanging in the wind as to whether the option we have on that task force, he's in an undercover capacity, he works cases throughout the New England region. What that does for the town of Hampton is certainly when we have a case here and we try to track back the opiates and the source, we go to the top of the pile because we have somebody on the task force. What it also gives us is the asset forfeitures. They were so concerned about the budget at one point that they were going to freeze the asset forfeiture program. Now, I would have probably kept our officer on there because I still think it's a worthwhile endeavor, but the funneling of the money from the asset forfeiture, our portion of it, would have ceased. These are the type of things when you get involved with these uh, regional task forces, either under the state or the feds, these other issues have an effect on those. What that effect you're talking about, it, it, that remains to be seen. I don't think it will ever close down completely these task forces <laughs> the amount of work they're able to do. So we haven't had those. We haven't really – we meet uh, quarterly with the uh, DEA coordinator up in Portsmouth, uh, all the chiefs that have officers on that particular task force. He has not called for a meeting based on, on that news report, so right now I'm not that worried about it. It's kind of, let's wait and see. Thank you. Anybody else have anything else? 
Thank, Thank you very much for your report. Thank you for what you do. Thank you. Uh, I think we had one other item. Uh, oh, I yeah, apologize. I, I meant to be in here a few weeks ago, but uh, we've the got a couple things The Penguin Plunge. We have the annual Penguin Plunge coming up this weekend. Uh, it's the same footprint that you always see. It's going to be Saturday. It's going to be the high school uh, group. And then the uh, traditional Penguin Plunge uh, is going to be on Sunday. We plan on shutting down Ocean Boulevard at H Street uh, to D Street around 9 o'clock. Uh, we have a permit from the state to uh, keep it closed till 3 o'clock. So what we're looking for is permission to reroute the traffic down on town roads down H Street and run Ashworth Ave as a two-way street from H Street all the way to D Street uh, behind the casino. Uh, this is the same pattern we've had for the last probably 12 years, probably the last dozen years. Um, I'll make the motion to let the chief. All in favor? Do you have it? But that's all we have for you the tonight. The poor teenagers going on Saturday, right? The high school kids? Yeah, they're actually easier to handle. <laughs> they actually that, that's going to be a cold day, <laughs> and Sunday's going to be a much warmer day. Sunday, whenever whenever a, a certain sports team happens to make the big game, oh, it, yeah. it, it's the beginning of the party, so it's a little bit, bit more of a handful. Mm. So. <laughs> we just asked when he coming down there. There still is a uh, open container water, and uh, try to be responsible while you're imbibing and <laughs> get, get someplace safe before you let it really fly loose. All right. And, uh, hopefully everybody has a good time. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen.